In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace the broken screen on the iPhone 7. Begin by taking a pentalobe screwdriver and removing the two star-shaped screws from the bottom of the device. Although on this one, we've only got one in there. I'm guessing it's been done before. And if you can, power down the device. With the device turned off, take a single-sided razor blade and create a small incision between the chassis of the device and the edge of the screen. And then once you've got a little bit of the way in, pry upwards to make a larger gap, big enough for the plastic guitar pick to fit in there. Once that's in, just insert it a couple of millimeters and slide it along the edge of the device on the right side edge, back along the bottom side, and then finally along the left hand edge, just a couple of millimeters. Don't worry about this top edge because we're just going to lift from the bottom now, wiggle from side to side, and then open it up like opening a book from the back cover. A good tip at this point is to take a sturdy weighted object like a mug and place it behind the screen so you can lean it on there. It's not going to fold back, damaging any flex cables, and you've got two hands free as well. We can now take our Y000 tri-wing screwdriver and remove the four screws that hold down this L-shaped shield. Just make note that each of these screws is a different size. So make sure that you're storing these in a way that you'll remember where they go. I advise using something like a magnetic mat. And once you've unscrewed those four screws, take a pair of tweezers and lift up the shield. Store that safely for later now. And now take a plastic prying tool to disconnect the battery as well as these two screen connectors here and here. Don't be tempted to lift the screen up just yet because we've got a crosshead screw just here. Remove that as well as the, the other one just here. Then the same again, use your tweezers to lift up the shield and plastic spudger to disconnect the flex cable. Now we can detach the screen and we'll work on this in a little bit. Don't throw it away yet because we do need to remove a couple of components off the back of the screen. Before we do that, I'm going to clean up some of this gunk from the edge of the chassis because we are going to put a new adhesive on there. In order to accommodate the new adhesive, we need to remove the old adhesive, which I can see over the years, this one has turned into probably the best way to describe it is snot. The easiest way to do this is to use your tweezers and rub it along the edge of the chassis, peeling away as much of the adhesive as possible. And then I'm gonna use a toothbrush as well, just to clean up all this dust and grime that's sat on this phone. It's just, it's filthy. Let's be real, it's absolutely disgusting. Once the majority of the edge is clean and the adhesive removed, I'll take a cleaning brush with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on there, and I'm just gonna run it along the edge making sure that it's really nice and shiny clean now so that our new adhesive can stick well to it. The screen that we're using for this repair comes with a replacement dust and moisture resistant seal. Just peel the backing sheet off there, then begin by laying it in the top left corner, aligning it along this left hand edge, and then the rest of it should follow as long as that battery tab's not in the way as well. Use the back edge of the spudger to just push it down a little bit as well, just to make sure that you've got a good sticky seal on there and then peel off the top layer of the film. We'll put the chassis to one side now and prepare the rest of the screen. Like I said previously, we need to remove the ear speaker and front camera from the back of the screen, as well as the home button. We'll begin with the home button, taking a tri-wing screwdriver and removing the four screws that hold down the shield holding in that home button. As with all the previous shields, we'll lift it up with the tweezers and then it starts getting a little bit trickier, but don't worry too much. You can see that it's covered in dust again, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna clean it. I'm gonna cover it with a dust cloth. And just give it a little wipe, brushing off as well. It looks a lot better than it did. So to remove this button, first of all, we need to detach this connector here. The easiest way to do it is just get the edge of the tweezers and then twist it so that it detaches it. It pushes down on that bit and pulls up on that bit at the same time. And then heat is optional. However, I use some sharp tweezers 
and just insert it in this point just here where the cable bends over. Make sure that you're pushing down and then you should be able to just run it across the back of there, lifting it up and dropping it out just like that. So we'll keep that to reinstall onto our new screen in a minute. But before that, we're gonna remove the six screws that hold down the air speaker shield. Again, these are all different size screws, so make sure that you keep these organized on whatever surface that you've chosen to use. Like I said, I would advise a magnetic mat. These are all crosshead, but they are all different sizes. Once they're all removed, we can use the tweezers to lift up the shield now. Then I'm gonna fold back this front camera so that I can lift out the ear speaker with my tweezers. Now take your tweezers and we're gonna lift up this part here, that's the proximity sensor. Same for this ambient light sensor. And then we're just gonna get under this flex cable for the ear speaker contacts. And we're just gonna pry upwards and lift up. Being careful not to tear it. It is fragile, so just be careful. You might find that a hair dryer or a heat gun will help soften the adhesive. But in this case, because it's so dirty, the adhesive has been compromised. With that removed, we can discard this broken screen. Although just a very, very quick note, you might find that the screen that you've purchased doesn't have this back plate attached. If it doesn't, remove the six or five or six tri-wing screws, it's six, and then pull the back plate off and transfer it onto your new screen. However, like I said, my new screen already has one attached. All we need to do is put that front camera on and home button, and then we're ready to rock. Let's start off with the ear speaker or front camera first. The easiest way that I've found that you can do this is to line up this bottom flex part first. So this bit with the four contacts on it for the ear speaker, line that up, and then you should find that the rest of it will line up nicely. You might just have to poke it around a little bit until it sits into those little parts that they're supposed to sit in. You'll know when it's in because it sort of clicks in. Keep your thumb on it, rest in it in place because it will spring out. And then slide the ear speaker underneath, holding it down with your other thumb. Fold the front camera over with your other thumb. Hold it in place. Like I said, these are springy parts. And then once that's in, we can get the the little shield on top. This is the fiddliest bit for sure. This is the worst bit. And trying to explain it and record it at the same time is always difficult. But once they're in place, you're gonna get the other top right or bottom right screw. I've gone for the bottom right and you can secure it into place. Once that's secured into place, we can release the thumb now. It will take a few tries to get that lined up and in place. You can also buy, I don't, I, well, I know that you used to be able to buy screens that had that camera already attached. However, I do believe it disables the auto brightness function if it doesn't have the original ambient light sensor on there. Once all those screws are resecured, we can move down now. And now for the home button, we're gonna sort of thread this through the hole for the home button, push it against that back edge, and then we're gonna sit it flat on the desk like that. Now, I know that everybody has their own techniques for doing this, but the way I like to do it is to pull that back, lift that part up, and then let that flop down so that it sits underneath it. Then we can push it and reattach that flex cable. Shield goes on top of that now. And then you've got the four tri-wing screws that hold that into place. Let me know in the comments below if you're having to go at this repair yourself. I'd love to know how you get on with it. Now that our home button is fixed into place, make sure that we've got all the screws in. It's sometimes worth having a look at tightening these screws up on this edge. Although these ones seem okay. I've got a conspiracy theory that the Chinese factories that manufacture these screens always leave them loose a quarter of a turn because over a day they're going to save money over a thousand screws or ten thousand screws there's a quarter less screws to install saving a lot of time now that the screen's ready we're going to offer up this first flex cable whilst holding the other one out of the way and then we're going to make sure that it connects and then push it down until it clicks and it's secured once that's in the rest of them should line up fairly well that one's lined up and just needs pushing down don't push down on it hard because there is a risk that you will crush the FPC connector 
just make sure that it's lined up first. It might be fiddly. Obviously, I've got a bit of practice in doing this and experience. With this top flex cable, we're gonna grab it with the tweezers like that, line it up and push it down with my thumb. Now I'm gonna put the mug back behind the screen to stop it from falling over. Now I can realign this shield here and secure it down with the two crosshead screws that we removed at the beginning. Now moving down, we can reattach the battery by just pushing it down and securing it into place. And the last screws on the inside of the phone are holding down the shield once you've got that lined up. And the easiest way to remember this is that the long screw goes here, always, and then the three smaller ones go on this left-hand edge, just here. We can remove the last of the blue peel on the adhesive seal. And then we can fold it over, peel off this very last bit. And then to line up the screen or to reinstall it onto the chassis, we're gonna make sure that it clips in underneath the chassis edge up at the top. And then we can apply pressure, squeeze it back in. Until it's secured and even all the way around. Let's reinstall the two pentalobe screws now, making sure they're nice and tight, and of course, replacing the one that was missing. Now I'm gonna plug it in and make sure that it's all working good before it goes back to our customer. One thing that I didn't mention during the repair, once you've connected the screen up, it is a good idea to test it and test it throughout the repair, because if anything does go wrong, you gotta know at which stage it happened and it just makes it a little bit easier to troubleshoot the problem. That just about completes this repair. Thank you for watching and see you next time.